in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you are saying amen, say it. Amen. amen. Studio, put a new door now so that everybody will cram it. Put it on the screen. Put it. If you need to snap it, snap it. If you need to write it, write it. Praise God. The studio. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, shall be the God of the day in my life this year.
we have been eating food all this time. It's time to unlock our future. Your future contains so much more. So much more. So much more. What God has prepared for me and you are locked up in the realm of the spirit. That is why to empower our spirit to draw those blessings. Without empowerment, destiny cannot happen. You will just exist like a normal human being. Suffering human past. But it is time to unlock Fasting enhances, it speeds up answer to prayers. Whatever we do in prayer, fasting helps them to come quick, quick. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Nobody knows what 2018 holds until God reveals it. If you claim to know, you only assume some of the things that you have been seeing. That's why he said, you shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If you know it, you won't pray. But everything that God will release to us this year, don't forget. There are human forces. Just like Paul said, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. But there are many adversaries. Please take it back the way it was before. I don't understand this. You are not increasing in knowledge. Everything God has appointed for you, there are contentions. He said, I've given to thy hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Hishbon and his land. He said, begin to contend with him in battle and do what? Possess it. So everything you will possess this year, you must contend to take delivery of them. Blessings are not cheap. You fight your way to take delivery of them. Destiny manifestation is not cheap. If it is cheap, why are you not manifesting? If it is cheap, why are you still on the same spot? So you must contend for your blessings to be delivered. What are the approach that we need to make fasting and prayer profitable? Because approach determines results. What we call approach is strategy. Number one, we must come Confessing and forsaking our sins. We must come confessing and forsaking our sins. Proverbs 28 and verse 13. Proverbs 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have what? Mercy. You don't confess and retake. You only confess and forsake. What do we mean confess and retake? Now we are in fasting mood. The same thing some people confess after January. They will go and collect it back. It's just like people that kept their bag at the door. As they are going back, I say, no, be my bag, give me my bag. 
They, they confess and they retake their old attitude. They confess and retake their old habits. They confess and retake their old lifestyle. You have succeeded in wasting that year and wasting your time. You confess and forsake. Not that you go and hijack back. To forsake means to abandon. That's abandon it. To forsake means to dump completely. To forsake means to drop finally. To forsake means to reject utterly. You reject it. Never to go back. There are some relationships you must break if God must show up for you. There are some people that have covered you and made sure that God does not visit you. You must tell them, I don't tire. I don't tire. Leave me alone now. You know, some people, they, if there is anything that they find difficulties, how will I tell him? Well, if the suffering you are going through is not enough, enjoy it. I remember in 2010, one came and said, if I tell him now, he will stop paying my school fees. I said, tell him first. She stopped coming to church. Are you wrong saying now? She stopped coming to church. There was another one. He thought she was playing smart. I think this happened last year. He dribbled the man. The man trained him finish. After the man has uh, finished training, he now said, I'm born again. <laughs> Do you know what the guy did? He killed her. Killed her. There are some things you must drop so that God will not drop you. There are some things you must let go <laughs> if you must see good. If you don't let go, you won't see good. Until the day that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Do you want to see God this year? <laughs> Your alternatives must go so that God can show. So you must confess and forsake those things. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Sin is a blocker. Jacob was in the lineage of the promise. He was a heir apparent of the covenant. But he had some crooked lifestyle. Jacob was the one that started 419. But you don't know. Scripture called him a swindler. A swindler. What's the meaning of a swindler? OBT. Obtaining by trees. Oh, you don't know it's in the Bible. But he got to a point in his life where he was tired. You hear me? All these things that people are begging you now. Wait, you go get you go tired one day. You go tired. Jacob got tired because he knew that the covenant was not working. That time, as scripture say, and Jacob was left alone. And he wrestled with God, meaning, Lord, I am tired. I need you now. I need your intervention. I need a turnaround. I need a change of story. Lord, I am tired of this lifestyle. <laughs> I will not let thee go except you bless me. Except you bless me means except you change my story. If you have suffered enough disappointment, 
you have gone through too many cycles of failure, God is giving you your desire change of story this month. But hear me, what are the things that makes prayer unanswered in your life? Look inwards. It's time to drop those things. I won't forget what one of our lecturers said in my second year, Dr. Isu. He was the boho specialist. He said, the greatest deception any man can give is himself. You can deceive everybody, but you can't deceive yourself. You can game everybody, but you can't game yourself. You can dribble everybody, but you can't dribble yourself. So one day I now ask him, sir, are you a pastor? He said, do I need to be a pastor to know the truth? He said, do I need to be a pastor to know the truth? He said, life operates on what you give, you get back. Tell yourself the truth. This thing is not helping me. Let me look for what will work. This thing is not helping my lifestyle. Lord, I need a change. If you don't confess, and if you don't forsake, <laughs> hear what Paul said, when I want to do good, the good I want to do, I do not. The evil that I don't want to do, he said, I find myself doing. He said, who shall deliver me from this flesh? So the flesh is an enemy of the plan and purpose of God. Number two, refuse to be offended in God and in man. Refuse to be offended in God. many ways to be offended in God without you, you opening your mouth. Lord, what are you going to do yourself? Are you sure you are still answering prayer? We are the ones that started leaving faith church last year. And people will just be coming and go and be sharing testimony anyhow. I'm the one that even started choir. Nothing has still happened. Lord, you are not trying. He's offended in God. Are you don't say now? You're offended in God. The friends of Job came to him. Are you still holding on to this, your God? Why don't you curse God and die? And Job replied, Why are you talking like a foolish man? You know, at that time, Job's understanding was little. He said, The Lord give it and the Lord take it. The wife now came again. <laughs> you are still holding on your integrity. See yourself. See yourself. There are wives that can make you to be offended in God. You are taking this church thing too far. If God wouldn't have done it, wouldn't it have shown by now? I beg, let's help ourselves from help. You hear me? Some of these things you call let's help ourselves is entering into other things. I'm telling you the truth. Let's help ourselves. One thing I know, God never comes late. Life has been designed to be run in time and season. Somebody's season may not be your season. That's one thing you must understand. Until you understand it, you will get offended. No wonder Job said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. Your change will not pass you by. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Life runs on time and season. 
So if somebody is making it now, does not cancel your chance of making it. That's his time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your own time is also coming. No wonder scripture said, do not therefore cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. After you have done the will of God, then there shall be a reward. A reward. Patience. 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 There is a place of patience when you are expecting a blessing. That does not mean that God has forgotten you. Anytime Satan makes you feel that God has forgotten you, he's trying to bring you under a curse. Because Jesus said, Woe is he through whom offenses shall come. Hear me? Oh. He said, Offenses shall come, oh, but may he not come through you. Woe means cost. Don't be offended in God. Because he's still the one that will bail you out. Don't be offended in God. Because if every other source is fail, he's the only one that cannot fail. He said, I am the Lord, I change it not. Don't be offended in God. Don't be angry with your maker. Lord, I'm angry with you. I won't come to church again. This fasting, I won't do it. Or I'll do what you want to do. Let me see. <laughs> Should I say this? God does not need fasting to remain God. He said, I am the Lord. I change it not. But you need this fasting for your own story to change. <laughs> God is not eating chicken in heaven. God does not need tear leather uh, Prado Jeep. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He doesn't need it. I am the Lord. I change it not. Don't be offended in God. One thing you must understand again. Behold, I've engraved thee on the palm of my hands. And thy wars are continually before me. If a mercy mother can forget his suckling child, I, the Lord, will not forget you. He can forget you. But you're already feeling forgotten. He can't forget you. He said, I'm watching you every day like mirror. I'm seeing every step you take, both the right one and the wrong one. He said, I cannot forget you. I cannot forget you. No wonder David said, Thy thoughts concerning me, they are very deep. He said, If I were to count them, they will have numbered the sands of the seashore. Please don't be offended in God this year. Don't say, Lord, why didn't He do it for me? All this will you have been doing it for them. Your time is coming. And this is your third time. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Remember that young man's testimony that I shared two, uh, three weeks ago that said, uh, Pastor, uh, I want to go and commit suicide. That uh, people that are graduated before three years behind, that they have all gotten job. I say suicide. Enter Moto, Ibuzo Junction, stop for Ninja Bridge, come down, jump inside. They have committed suicide. He didn't need to do prayer and fasting. He didn't need to just thank God for all that he has been doing for him. And immediately he did that. Doors open. Don't be offended in God. If you're offended in God, you can't pray through. You can't pray through. Who are you praying to? No, answer me. Who are you praying to? The God that you are offended in is the one you are praying to. Unto him that answered prayer shall all flesh come. Likewise also, don't be offended in man. I operate Bishop Oedeko's principle. 
I forgive you, but I don't give you another chance. Forgive the person, let him go. I forgive you, I don't give you another chance. So that I will make heaven and you to you will make heaven. But you don't have another chance to offend me or wound me again. I forgive you, but I don't give you another chance. That's the law of advanced forgiveness. This year, offenses will come up. There are some people you forgive, but that does not mean that uh, you now come and draw them. They may become a senior winch. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because when he attacked you, he may claim that the um, devil he has repented. Now, when he's coming back, what he will not be? Lucifer. <laughs> forgive the person. There are people you must forgive. You must forgive them. You must forgive them. Do you hear me? Unforgiveness is one of the baits of unanswered prayers. There are some people in the church now that have tied their mother rope like a belt. I go punish you. They have tied their brothers, tied their sisters. Leave them, let them go. Forgive them. As I'm talking now in LFC Lafia, there are people still keeping malice. You want to start 21 days? Where will the prayer pass? That's why storing up offenses is not good. If you do anything wrong, I call you and I tell you this thing is wrong. There are some people when things go on, they will now begin to broadcast away. Kelly, you see what this person do? I'm just informing you, just not. What you have succeeded in doing is increasing hatred, fueling up bitterness. There are some people that have not done you anything. You have not had any contact with them. You are already offended in them. How can you pray true? You're already offended. Even the evil that they have told you, you have not. Can you stand and confirm it? Can the fact be placed before you and you are proved right? Or even the person that brought it to you is proved right? That's why when they tell you, they say, keep it to yourself. Don't let him know. Anything they tell you, keep it to yourself is evil. If it is right, confront it. Be bold to confront it if you are a man, if you are a woman. That's why some people don't pray through. Offenses. You just see somebody, you just hate the person. Are you a witch? Dr. Kenneth Copeland said, people that store up offenses never grow in the anointing. People that store up offenses never grow in grace, in unction. They never grow in the anointing. Because the unction called anointing flows on love. There are people you must just love because of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God is love, not like love. And if you say, if you call them God, means you are a God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Have I been offended? Plenty. If you were 1,007 or 1,800, eh? It then means I've received offenses for nothing less than 1,800 persons. But yet, I will still behave as if nothing happened and be preaching fresh. There are some people when they're offended. That's how one deacon is, is, is trying to... Uh, <laughs> some even go and mention names. It's wrong. It's a sign of immaturity. Please, I beg you, you can't pray through with offenses. 
you offended in man, you offended in God. In fact, some of the people you are even offended in are your destiny helpers. And you know when you use offenses and drive them away, you will not be kept on KIV for God to send another one. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't. If you are locking up everybody in your heart, which means if they do your chest like this, they go see plenty of people head. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? This person, you lock him up. This person, you lock him up. Which means if angels are conducting x ray for people now, and they just say, hey, let's open that person up. Which means they will see some people's face that you have been locking up. Hear me? Let them go. Let them go. There are some people you, you, you need to send text messages today. I've forgiven you. It's our new dawn. I've forgiven you. It shall be well with you this year. Are you what I'm saying now? A pastor met me. He said, this person has offended you. I said, I've forgiven him. And take me by my word. I've forgiven him. But I won't give him another chance. It's as simple as that. Any relationship you don't value, you lose. It's as simple as that. I've forgiven him. And God is my witness. I've forgiven him. But not another chance. It's as simple as that. There are some people that have matched Papa terribly. They've matched him terribly. People he lifted, though. People he helped. They wounded him. But yet, he still forgive them. But that does not mean that uh, he will come out uh, and lie. It can't happen. Are you hearing me now? Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, whoever has offended you, let him go. So that you can see good this year. Do you agree? Deal or no deal? deal? I know why I'm saying this because I want your testimony to start quick, quick. And don't be surprised, God will start visiting some people even today. He said, Before you call, I will answer. While you are here speaking, I will do what? Perform. So let him go. Let him go. Number three, define your goals and objective of the fasting. Well, let me say this before we enter this one now. God is not behind our troubles, but is the one that bails us out of trouble. So how can you be offended in the one that wants to bail you out? So define your goals and objective for the fasting. Why am I fasting? You must define your goals. Because only those that can define are permitted to find. Scripture, he that seeketh shall do what? Find it. If you don't know what you are finding, everything may look like it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let me give you a classic example. One sister came to me for prayer one time. Not here, I think she should be in data. That um, she was going out with the brother, and uh, the brother told her that uh, I like you because of your open teeth. Just hear the story now. Why he shout? But the brother was very tall, like Pastor James and uh, Pastor Benny. But look at what happened. After a while. The young man now found another tall girl and left her. Are you wrong saying now? After he left her, he played around. 
a year plus and later came back. And now came back to the girl again and said that he's sorry, this is that. And so she now said, Pastor, what should I do? I said, use your tongue, count your teeth. The reason why I say use your tongue, count your teeth, you are not what he is looking for. He's only using you as a spare tire. By the time you locate another tall girl, we fine. You go go again. <laughs> we get open it. <laughs> the young man has defined what he wants, so you are not what he's looking for. So the moment he, he locates what he's looking for, bah! tall with open teeth. Only those that define can do what? Fine. So you to define what you are looking for and leave him alone. Because I assure you, the moment he locates it, he go take off again. So define it. Our life is defined by goals. What is your goal this year? Because your goals will give a picture of what your plans will look like. If you don't have a goal, you can never score in life and in destiny. Who has watched a football match without a goal post? That's me. So goals enhance his purpose. Goals activate potentials. Goals enhance our three-dimensional capacity. Mental capacity, spiritual capacity, physical capacity. I carry this diary because this is my 2018 goals and plans. My spiritual goals, my mental goals, my family goals, my business goals, my investment goals, my targets. And everything I wrote here is an upgraded version of 2017. The ones I scored 50, the ones I scored 75, the ones I scored 100%, I upgrade them. What is your goal? Because God looks at the plans and the goals you set to determine where he futures, where he engraces you. That's why People that are without goal, they just pray at random. Lord, show yourself. 2018, show yourself in my life. Lord, say, where? Where? Show yourself where? 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 Where do you want me to show myself? Show me. Where? Where? <laughs> Lord, I must marry in 2018. You say, who? 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 <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? Lord, in 2018, you must bless me. How? How? How do you want me to bless you? How do you want me to bless you? He can bless you with anything. So you must define it. Lord 2018, open door. Open door. Which door? Which door? <laughs> Is it door of marriage? Or door of visa? Or door of job? Or door of cars? Door not door. But you must define the door. That's why scriptures, it says, a great door and effectual. It defines it. You must define it. Effectual. Once, brother, is a pastor, wanted to marry. So, he came to me and he said, he says, I want you to guide me. He was a youth pastor. He was a youth pastor in Benin before they carried him. So I said, ask the sister, which kind of man is she looking for? Or what is she aspiring to be? Do you know what the sister said? She said, if I marry, I will open a cosmetic shop. I said, brother, run. <laughs> run for your life! No be your wife without that one a knife. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, define. 
If you don't define, you can never find. Lord, open doors of opportunity. Doors of opportunity. Which kind door? Is it 419? Do you know that anything you are looking for in this life, you will find it? Open door, open door, open door. Lord, which kind door? God will be asking you which kind door, which kind door. So you must define it. You must define it. Not only that, look at your spiritual life. Are you making efforts to grow in prayer? Are you making efforts to improve? You, you must set it as a goal. Just like you set a goal in school that I must hit to one. You set a goal and you now begin to read like someone that wants to make two one. Lord, I must make first class. You set a goal and you begin to read like someone that wants to make first class. So you don't just enter fasting and prayer like jaga jaga. That's why you just suddenly get tired. When you are pursuing something worthwhile, you don't get tired. Because that picture sticks. And until you get it, you won't rest. You must define what you want to find. Many of us, we need to recover our spiritual momentum. Paul said to the Galatian church, Oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you? He said, did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? I don't know what pushed my wife yesterday. She went and started searching and searched out one of my diaries. When, as I left the house and came back, my mind was on that diary. Things I wrote that I have not yet done as I'm going back to them. If there is anything I've told God to be recovered for me this year, it's my reading momentum. What I call reading momentum, I need it back. I discover that I've just suddenly reduced a little. I said, no, I'm taking back my momentum for reading. Because new dawn is a function of light. There are things hidden that must be revealed. Some of us, we need to reclaim our prayer momentum. Our passion for prayer, suddenly it is lost. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee to see thy power as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You need to regain your lost momentum. The things you once had fervency, all of a sudden you have lost it completely. You must set a goal for recovery. Likewise, goals influence direction. And direction determines speed. Your goal determines your direction. And when you define your goal, you know the people that are not going your way. You know the people that are not going your path, you avoid them. Not that you hate them, they will not help you arrive at where you are going. You also set goal for your family. Lord, I'm not impressed with my family condition. Look at this one is not doing well. Look at this one is not doing well. Look at this one is a concern to everybody. Lord, there must be a change in their life one by one. You are the Joseph of your family. So even in the place of prayer, you are the one that God will use to bail them out. You look at your family condition. Lord, my family is not feeding well. David says, since I was born, now I'm getting old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. Lord, my family is almost running into debt. Lord, you must bring my family out of debt. You must pray. Destroy and dislodge the forces. 
that has stagnated the flow of supply. So you must set goals. Where do you want to arrive in 2018? Where are you now? Because you need to know where you are before you get to where next God has in mind for you. Where were you? And where do you want to reach? Where are you? Where do you want to reach? You must write it down. You must write it down. Part of your goals also, what do you want to see God do in this church? Some people now don't, know, don't belong to any unit. You ask them which unit? Third service. Some you ask some people, first service. Is first service a unit? What do you want God to do in this church? 10,000 worshippers is a reality. You must be part of it. Which means whatever it takes for souls to be added, Lord, I am involved. Part of your goal this year, Lord, increase signs and wonders in this assembly so that LFC Lafia will be the center of solution. Men will be coming from Doma, from Abuja, from Makodi, even from Joss, to come and worship here. You are not saying amen. Yeah. Even if you don't say amen, me, I don't say my own amen. Yeah. Are you hearing me now? It will work. I say it will work. Yeah. I say it will work. Yeah. What are your goals? Define it. Part of your goals, you need to be upgraded. Tell your neighbor, upgraded. Yeah. To be upgraded in your career. Which new skill do I need to learn that will enhance my status, enhance the flow of blessings that will give me more better opportunity? Part of your goals, if you are a singer, man, I need to improve. I'm not doing it well enough. I need to go up. Because whatever you keep doing over and over and over without improvement, you are still on the same spot. Oh, you are still on the same spot. Number four, prepare to engage your heart in seeking the Lord, not engage your head. Do you know we can be praying? You just be shaking your head. You are not praying, no. You are only giving your head some vibrations. That's why scripture calls it a heartfelt prayer, not a head shaking prayer. Oh Lord, oh Lord. And he's praying and he's sweating, you know. <laughs> People think he's praying. He's not praying anything. Scripture say a heartfelt prayer. Make it tremendous power available. So you must engage your heart. Engaging your heart. Let me just make it clear. In this fasting, I am not coming out without my answer. In this fasting, God will show up for me. In this fasting, this situation must bow. Do you know why? Let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. The meaning of boldly means confidence. You have confidence that as you are going before God in prayer, you are going to get an answer. Now, let me take a very classic example. There are some people you just meet. You are requesting for 100,000. You know that you know in their hearts they have the 1,000. Am I correct? Now, what you are asking for, does God have it? Answer me, does God have it? Can he give it to you? Yeah. Scripture says, withhold no good from whom it is due. When it is in the power of the hand to do what? 
that. He said, do not say to your neighbor, go and come tomorrow when you have it right there with you. So you must engage your heart in the prayer. In seeking the Lord. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 1. Proverbs 16 and verse 1. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from who? Let me explain it this way again. Winning in boxing is of the heart. Winning in football is of the heart. Not of the face or of the size. That's why they have what we call a psychological coach. What the psychological coach do is to psych their mind. You are bigger than these people. You have more exposure than them. You must win them. Look at this. We win them this year. We win them this year. We win them this year. Check all our record. They have not defeated us. So you must win them. What are they doing? They are psyching their mind. That as they enter the field, they will, they will, as they are looking at the people, they will be telling them in their mind, I'm winning you. I'm winning you. That's why in boxing, there is what they call pre-match. They will bring the two boxers. They will look at themselves. Who has what um, Rocky for? Hey, look, Rocky looked at him and said, You're a dead man. He told him, You're a dead man. After punching him, he caught here, caught here. But one of the requests the coach made before he died, he said, if there is anything you will do for me, make sure you get him down. Even though I die, go to Siberia and train. Siberia is snow. So he sent him to Siberia to go and train. He will be carrying a um, big box and be rolling on top of it. After that, he started punching the snow. He said, this one, you are not punching back punch the snow and let blood pee so that when you meet Rocky you knock him down for him now after he came back they fixed another match this time he looked at him he said it is your turn to go down when they entered the ring he didn't complete he, the way he punched him or every part of his face there was blood until the point he couldn't see again the referee had to stop the match you hear me you must win in this 21 day fasting whatever force have been molesting you molesting your family they will go down for you this year some people they have not married because of spirit wife or spirit husband it's time for that spirit husband to die it's time for that spirit wife to die you must enter this prayer with your heart a heart full of faith that this prayer I must win I'm not losing I'm coming out refined whatever has been stopping me their time of stopping me is over after these 21 days my glory will be announced if you are saying amen say better amen every time we engage with our heart we connect to power Every time we engage it with our heart, we increase in confidence. Every time we engage with our heart, we trigger the acts of God. He said, who has believed our reports? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our reports? As scripture says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are returning with your testimony. Amen. What are the blessings that goes with this fasting and prayer? Number one, God takes over our battle. So what we do in fasting and prayer, we hand over the battle to God. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. So we hand over our battle to God. Scripture say unto him the answer in prayer shall all flesh do what? Come. So in prayer, we're handing over our battles to God. Lord is over to you. 
this matter cannot be in your hand and I end in shame. I hand over my matter to you. This matter cannot be in your hand and men are mocking me. Lord, you can change my story. Jehoshaphat cried. He said, oh Lord, we have no might of our own. We have no might of our own. Meaning, Lord, fight my battle. And God replied, you shall not need to fight in this battle. I, the Lord, will fight for you. In this fasting, every man every unseen forces that have been fighting your life fighting your destiny fighting your marital destiny fighting your family breakthrough the hand of god will be going against them so handing our battle over to god means we are reaffirming our dependency our confidence in god the battle you have not handed over to God is the one that you will never win. The battle you have never handed over to God is the one you will never win. Your hand, my hand, is too small to bring to pass the plan and purpose of God. That's why we must hand it over to God. Lord, show yourself in my life. Do what makes you God. Reveal your awesomeness. This matter is not beyond you. I count on your unfailing hand. No wonder Jabez said, Oh, that thy hand. Lord, I can't change my story. I am born in sorrow. I can't change this sorrow. Lord, turn this sorrow around. Turn this sorrow around. I remember a testimony that was shared last year. A woman who has suffered diabetes for so many years in the course of the 21 day prayer and fasting she was able to pray beyond two three hours she was praying five hours god healed her supernaturally god healed her i see god repeating his acts in every area of your life so hand over that battle to god Hand over that strong man in your family to God. Because God will only take over what you have handed over. When men have said they will deal with you, Lord, I can't deal with them or I hand them over to you. Five nations came against Jehoshaphat. I have no might of my own. Lord, I hand them over to you. When he handed over, what did God do? Scripture said, God set ambushment against them. And they began to do what? Kill themselves. Hear me and hear me well. This first week, not the 21 days, the first seven days, the nations, the men that have vowed that they will stop you, they will kill themselves. Yeah. Write it down. I said so. 7th of January 2018. The forces that have ganged up against your life and vowed a vow against you. I say it on this altar again. They will kill themselves. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. Any battle you take to God and hand over to God ends up in victory. What are the blessings that go with fasting and prayer? Deliverance from every satanic yoke. So we are going to be doing a specialized fast and we'll be taking these issues one after the other. One after the other. One after the other. If you miss, you miss out. In fasting and prayers, yokes are destroyed. What are yokes? Yokes are, uh, let me, who has seen a cow that they use in digging ground before? Good. What they place on the back of the cow is a yoke. It makes it difficult for it to run. It crawls under torture. Now when a yoke is upon your life, you struggle. You encounter difficulties. You are stagnated. 
Some people, they are going through what we call financial yoke. Marital yoke. Career yoke. Forces are vowed that you will crawl. <laughs> but scripture says, in Mount Zion, there shall be what? And David said, when I came into the temple, then I knew their end. Every yoke ends at the presence of God. Much more in fasting with prayer. Deliverance from witchcraft manipulations. Satanic programmings. Yes, God has programmed you for blessings. But forces have also programmed you to contend with the things that are about to come. But hear me. We are going to have a service. <laughs> Elimination by substitution. I hope you know God is a mathematician. It's in the Bible. I should read it for you. I should read it for you. Isaiah 43. There's elimination by substitution. Isaiah 43. Studio. Because thou... But, but now, thou said the law that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Has God redeemed you? I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. The next verse. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Syria. How many nations? You don't see something. The next verse. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men and people. Are you not seeing it? Elimination by substitution. That's why I say, surely they shall gather. Gather well, though. Surely they shall do what? But not by me. Anyone that gather against you, they shall do what? Fall. So wherever they have been gathering and holding coven meetings because of you, one by one, all of them will scatter. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Whoever has programmed you, programmed an arrow for you, for your family, in these 21 days, their arrow will backfire in their own camp. If you are saying amen, say better amen. He said, I give them as a ransom, which means they will be used. Their head will go for you. The plans they have made against you will backfire. And not only that, evil covenants, hidden evil covenants, there are forces that are vowed to stop you. But you don't know where the thing is coming from. No matter how mysterious it looks, there is deliverance for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And also, every answer you desire. Isaiah 58 and verse 9. Then thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, accusation, gossip, and speaking vanity. The next verse now. And if thou draw the soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall the law, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and the darkness be as the noonday. It's a new dawn for you. So fasting helps to facilitate your new dawn. Your new dawn. 
So every long-awaited answer, even in the 21 days, God will be delivering them. Yeah. One thing unique about fasting and prayer is that as you are calling, calling is responding. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't need to wait till the end of the prayer before God will answer. He say, why you are calling, I will do what? Perform. I will answer. Why you are here speaking, I will do what? Answer. He will answer you. He will answer you. The reason why God is answering you why you are calling so that you know the step to take. Because the moment answers come, action follows. The moment answer comes, action do what? Follows. The next thing that I know that will happen to you, you will be stepping into a new dimension of favor. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Favor is like changing the engine oil in your car. You are not permitted to run your life this year with old oil. What do the bed go to do at the mountain? To change your skin. But before the skin will change, oil will flow. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So you are going to be assessing new levels of favor this year. If you are saying the man say better, amen. And when favor comes, struggle dies. The things others are struggling to get, cheaply, it will be delivered to you. Favor sets a limit on how far your destiny can go. Are you wrong saying now? Favor sets a limit. Favor sets a limit on the doors that will open for you. On the opportunities that will come your way. That's why if you are a believer and you are not favored, man, you go walk like Jackie. You go suffer. If everything you are getting is coming by your hand, man, God is not favoring you. You are a disfavored person. That's why you must cry out for favor. Lord, favor me. Lord, favor me. Say, for thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. So this is your set time of favor. If there is anything that must be upgraded in your life, it's not only anointing, it's also favor. They got not the land in possession by their arm. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy arm. And the light of thy countenance, because thou hadest a favor unto them. Lord, show me your favor in my career, in my family, in my business. Let your favor break out in a new way. You must cry out for favor and you must get it. I say you will get it. And lastly, you will be empowered to see what God has appointed. There are things God has appointed. In this new dawn, don't make it look general. You are unique. You are peculiar. The blessings of God, they are peculiar to you. Your breakthrough is peculiar to you. Your open door is peculiar to you. So God will be giving you your desired open door. He will be giving you your desired breakthrough. He will be giving you your desired turnaround. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. My breakthrough is different from your own. Do you agree with me? Your own breakthrough is different from somebody's own. But all of them are contained in new dawn. Am I saying something to somebody? You will not miss your portion. That's why you must enter this fasting with a winning mentality. A winning me you need a winning mentality. Hunger, I don't the job seeing so. Now you must wait. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's not fasting that you'll be doing and you'll be watching the clock like goalkeeper. Is it 10 o'clock? What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? I feel like breaking. You are only dieting. Fasting, no word study. Now hear me. I'm not saying you should read all the books. On faith, read some chapters. On grace, on exploits, on signs and wonders. Towards mental exploits. Satan get lost. You are believing God that that sickness will be wiped away. Breaking financial hardship. You must take them one after the other. 
the new book on hope, you take it. The power, for, the power of the word for turn around. You look at it. This thing must turn. You shall not be barren. Man, you are carrying your miracle baby. So you must take them one after the other. One after the other. Which are the areas that concerns your family? You must have faith for that blessing to come. Your children. Lord, my children, this year, they will be outstanding. You also program them in their fasting. And believe God for their turnaround. Rise up to your feet. Don't be surprised. Some people have bought cartons of biscuits. What did I say? And when I mean biscuit, I'm not talking about small, small biscuit too. Heavy, heavy one. Lord, this is your flesh. And they will be hiding moths under. Lord, this is your blood. You don't eat. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God told Elisha, he said, eat for the journey is far. This journey we are about to go, if rats can survive 21 days without water and food, cockroach can go 14 days without seeing any rubbish to eat. They need they die two times. Now once they, they die. You are not dying. It's only, you are only empowering your spirit to take delivery of what God has appointed. As we are going to partake of this communion, we are going to pray. Listen, listen to the prayer. Holy Spirit, help me these 21 days. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said they shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not what? Faint. Lord, as I wait upon you these 21 days, Spirit of God, empower me with strength. Mental strength, physical strength, spiritual strength. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Empower me. As you partake of this angel's food, he said, eat for the journey is still what? Far. 21 days is not two hours, one minute. It's not 21 hours, it's 21 days. Lord, as I partake of this communion, empower me. Empower me. Empower me for a change of story. Empower me for a change of story. Empower my spirit, man. Empower me mentally. Give me mental stamina. Give me spiritual stamina. Empower me physically. I will not break down. I will not faint. I will not break down. I will not faint. I will not abort this fasting. In the name of Jesus, I will not abort this fasting. Jekurate lamando setolea. I call for your marvelous help. Lord, help me. These 21 days, I will not faint. I will not be weary. I will not faint. I will not fall. In the name of Jesus, I call for your marvelous help. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody is saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to start 2018 with a clean slate. Wherever you are, and you want to make it right with Jesus, you want to even rededicate your life back to God. You were born a believer. You missed it out, out of carelessness, out of one wrong step. Put your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. 
In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, congratulations. Put your hands together for Jesus. Carry your bag on your Bible and come right now. If you pray that prayer with me, God bless you. God bless you. If you pray that prayer with me, God bless you. If you pray that prayer to enforce your turnaround, your change for this year, God bless you. If you are coming, coming, put those hands together for Jesus. Please help me welcome that man. Help me welcome that brother. Lord Jesus, unto them that come unto you, shall you know why it's cast out. They have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. As I put this oil upon you, every guilt of the past, whatever legal hold the enemy had over you, the yoke is destroyed. 2018, your life will not struggle. Your destiny will blossom. In the name of Jesus Christ, every manipulation you have suffered before now, today marks the end in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Put your hands together for Jesus. Turn on the right now. As you partake of this communion, somebody is saying, Pastor, why is it that any time there is fasting, that's when my temptation is increasing. Should I say something? Was Jesus tempted? When did his temptation come? Do you know that when you are doing fasting, that's when people who are not supposed to talk to you begin to insult you. Some people say, if not for this fasting, what they do now? For show you something. You are not in any fasting. Wait after this fasting, you go see my red eye. We don't need to see your red eye. You are not in any fasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Fasting time, you behave like someone that is not hearing. What are they even saying? It's a distraction. Expect it, it will come. But you need to be guided. It's not time to answer back. It's time to keep quiet. When you see it come, you say, ah, don't catch up. You know, go see me. Bye bye. You must dodge every distraction and every trap the enemy will set for you this fasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As you partake of this communion, your flesh will not fail, your mind will not fail, your spirit will not fail. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power to carry you through these 21 days, let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you.